A fader stands for Analog Fader Accesses DAW Automation and is an innovative way of combining the familiar convenience of your chosen DAW automation with the superior sound of analog by allowing DAW track automation to control the AWS analog fader levels. In other words, the DAW automation controls the AWS analog moving faders level so you get to use the DAW's automation with the AWS's analog mix bus, a feature unique to the AWS. A fader brings you out of the box and opens up a wide range of creative opportunities within the mixing process. One of the big advantages of AFader is that it utilizes an automation system that you should already be familiar with if you're a regular DAW user, and of course provides a graphical editing environment. And any timeline edits in your DAW, such as removing the third chorus, will automatically keep all of the appropriate automation data in the right place. The AWS console's analog faders are controlled from DAW tracks 1 to 24, and any automation moves on those DAW tracks will make the AWS analog faders move accordingly. Note that when in A-fader mode, channel banking is disabled in order to lock the console's channels to the related DAW automation data. There are a few methods to accomplish this, so let's look at a couple of them. Perhaps the advantage of this method is that all the existing DAW automation will be replicated in the analog domain. This is ideal if you want to translate an in-the-box mix onto the AWS. To do this, simply route the DAW tracks from a pre-fader output into the AWS line inputs. and set the gains to 0 dB. So from Pro Tools, the existing automation will now run the AWS analog faders. Remember to deassign the Pro Tools audio track main output to avoid a mix of pre and post fader signals. So now we have all of our Pro Tools tracks coming out via Send A, and we have disabled the normal track outputs. Now, if we go into our MISC menu on the monitor panel, we see a couple of options labeled DF1 and DF2. These stand for DAW follow 1 and 2, so either of our connected workstations could run the AFADER system. Now, of course, any track automation on the first 24 channels in our workstation are now controlling the AWS faders in the analog domain. This is great if you have a pre-existing in-the-box mix and would like to enjoy the benefits of doing that mix in the analog domain out of the box with all the benefits of an analog mix bus. However, if you have no pre-existing mix or have built up a great balance in the analog domain before engaging AFADER, then a very helpful feature is provided called Snap. When you press this switch, you can see all of your DAW fader levels jump to wherever they were in the analog domain. So whichever is the preferred method, the AWS can accommodate building a mix from scratch in either the workstation or the analog domain. Another AFADER methodology is to use dedicated tracks in your workstation specifically for the AWS analog faders. Let's have a look at using our secondary workstation, Logic Pro. To accomplish this, simply add another 24 audio tracks at the top of your session's project, and perhaps even label them AWS 1 to 24 for convenience. The advantage of this method is that you keep any existing DAW automation data intact, so perhaps some micro-automation, ducking a few syllables on the vocal, perhaps even an aggressive tremolo effect, are done in the DAW domain, and then you can use the superior analog domain to create a balance mix. If you want to use some of the existing DAW track automation, then all you have to do is simply copy the automation data to the appropriate AWS fader track that you made earlier. If you have already created a pleasing balance mix on the AWS and wish to use that as your starting point, simply locate the beginning of your session and, as mentioned before, press the snap switch on the monitor panel. This will then force the DAW faders controlling the AWS to snap to the previous levels created on the AWS. Of course, you could even dedicate a separate DAW to the one with the audio data, if you so wished, and maybe have that running the AFADER automation. It really is up to you and your preference. The whole point of AFADER is to provide you with already familiar automation tools, graphical editing, and enhancement to your working methods throughout a modern production session. For the more experienced engineer, the AWS features a comprehensive SSL automation system built on the legacy of the legendary G and K series automation. This will be entirely familiar to anyone who's used an SSL console previously. The system allows dynamic fader and cut automation and locks to incoming MIDI timecode and supports MIDI machine control for locators or from your host DOW. The system is frame accurate and supports both moving and non-moving fader modes. 
So once we have set up MTC and MMC sends from our workstation, we enter AWS Automation by pressing the Auto Soft key. You can see a couple of mix passes have already been made in this title, but let's make a fresh one. To do this, highlight New Mix and press the rotary control down to create a new mix. One thing to remember is that if you're starting from scratch, you should locate to the beginning of your project before pressing Execute. At this stage, we won't worry about the other options and we'll press Execute to enter the mix. So here you can see at the top of the AWS TFT screen a large clear timecode readout from your project. As we locate it to the beginning of our project, it reads zero. And you can also see bar graphs representing the fader levels. So if I move a fader, you can see that on the screen. Now, if we press play, our project will start running and we can move the faders to accomplish the mix we desire. So there, I've done a little automation for the intro of our session. If I rewind or locate back to the beginning of our session and press play again, then any of the moves I've just performed will play back. Also notice that when we get to the last point that I wrote automation previously, all of the faders have jumped back into right. This is very useful because the SSL automation is showing me where I got to the last time and is telling me I need to carry on automating from this point. We call this the rollback point. You could obviously carry on within this mix pass and build up your mix slowly if you wished. However, one of the unique things about SSL automation is the concept of the mix pass. Perhaps a more efficient and indeed more creative way of working is every time you make some fader moves on your project and are relatively satisfied with them, get into the habit of pressing the end switch. As you can see, the moves we just performed are now stored, in this case under MixPass 3. That data is totally secure, and the great thing here is that we can, if you will, build more automation and fader movement on top of it, yet never destroy what we had originally. Let me show you. So now, when I select and go into Mix 3, and execute, the mix we just did will play. And as before, when we get to the rollback point, the faders will jump into right. So I'll just do a little more automation. But notice when I hit end, the display now shows me mix 4, arrow 3. This tells me that mix pass 4 is built on the foundations of mix pass 3, the first one I did earlier in the demonstration. Perhaps the main creative use for this methodology is that you are free to experiment with different approaches to mix, but never have to worry about affecting earlier work that you considered good. Additional mix safety features come in the form of protection. If I carry on with the mix, you can see here, before I press execute, I could press protect. Then on an individual or indeed global basis, we can set the automation into three modes. The default is auto, which means that automation will be written as before, but I can change to manual, which is great for trying or rehearsing a few mix ideas, or safe mode, which means that automation will play and you can move the faders, but they will have no effect on the levels. This is most useful when you have an artist, producer or collaborator who insists on getting hands-on with the console despite your carefully considered mixing. In this mode, they will not affect it. Of course, once we have written the automation data, we may wish to make adjustments to it later. There are several different methods. Firstly, it's worth pointing out that the faders are touch sensitive, so anytime you grab one and make moves, it will jump into right. But if you like to work like this, I suggest you engage the snap function. With snap engaged, we can overwrite automation data by grabbing the fader and making the change, but now when we let go of the fader, it will snap back to the automation it was following previously. You can determine how many frames it takes the system to return to the underlying automation in the console setup menu, so you can tailor it to create musical mixes as opposed to apparent level jumps. If you prefer total control of your new move versus the existing automation, then a good option would be Auto Takeover. This will avoid any apparent level jumps when dropping out of right. So I select Auto Takeover from my menu, and then when I play back my mix and grab the fader, it goes into right as before. But now, when I let go of the fader, you'll see it stays where I leave it. But if I then hit the fader switch, you can see on the scribble strip a set of arrows. Currently they're telling that the underlying automation data is a lower value to where the fader is currently set. And if I move the fader in the direction of the arrows, when I get to the point where the existing automation level is at, the system will drop out of right. This is useful for creating more natural sounding fader moves. Many of the classic older SSL consoles didn't have moving faders, and a lot of engineers prefer working without moving faders, simply writing initial automation and then doing all updates in trim mode. Once we've done a pass, just enter trim mode and complete the mix there.
So let's assume we're getting towards the end of our mix session and we're fairly happy with it. However, the artist is insistent that their vocals, for example, should be a bit louder. This could be a problem, as previously we have written a complex series of fader rides and are using quite a lot of automation for the vocal fader. Of course, we really don't want to have to rewrite all that data. There's nothing wrong with it, it's just a bit quiet in the opinion of the artist. No problem with AWS automation. Simply engage trim. This means you can set the fader levels to a comfortable position and you won't have to chase it. Now, when we play, the mix runs and all of our previous moves are played back. Yet by moving the faders, I can trim the overall volume up by a few dBs to satisfy the artist. A variation on this is called trim lock. This allows you to create a predefined gain change value. Before pressing play, set the value Now press play, and every time I press the fader switch, the level will jump up by that predefined value. A very useful tool indeed, opening up lots of creative options. Other AWS automation features worth mentioning include the ability to, as well as the faders, automate the cut switches. This is very useful for trying different arrangement ideas or for creating a very dynamic mix. You can also freely copy automation data between different channels, which is very useful on occasion. If you want to run a pseudo grouping of faders, it's possible to link them via AWS automation. Simply select links on the TFT screen and create a new link. And then use the fader select switches to add whichever channels you wish. This can be very useful as the solo and cut switches are linked as well as the faders. This is great for source groups such as a drum kit. Of course, there is the potential for two signal paths on each channel of the AWS 948, and we automate the secondary path too. If I'm in the mix running or review window and push a dual inline channels V part, now you can see that the fader bar graph on our screen is green, notifying me that I am now automating the secondary path. Don't worry, the primary path is still playing back with its associated automation data. So all 48 inputs on a 948 can have level and cut automation applied to them.